have bad English and your voice is low is impossible. If your English is poor, be louder. At least we can guess. At least we have a chance to try to understand. You should not be quieter if your English is worse. You should be louder. You should be louder. Think about your presentation goals. When your audience leaves your speech, you want them to have a clear picture of your contribution and you want them to read your paper. In fact, we could say that's why you're at the conference, to advertise, just like a dirty salesman. You're there to advertise. I'm a dirty salesman, I can say that. You're there to advertise your research. You're there to let people know about where uh, you can find your paper. You hope that you have, you have a handout. You want them to take it home and read it on the plane on the way home. And then call you and say, I think we can write a paper together. That's what you want. That's what you want. Focus on the main points. Your audience is not going to remember the details, so less is actually more, especially in a 12-minute talk plus 3-minute Q&A. You can't give the history of the world in that amount of time. You can't give your whole paper. If you try, you will fail. It will be a disaster. And I think we've all seen people who try to go through too many slides in a too short time. Better to do less than to overwhelm people with a lot of detail. You don't need to give all the background information. They can read your paper if they want a complete literature review. You don't need to de defend the validity of your idea. You do that in your dissertation defense, but not at the conference. You don't need to give a whole literature review. Just a few key papers is, in, is the main point. You're not there to talk about other people's research, but your research. You need to give short take-home points that they will remember. Don't summarize popular ideas. Don't assume that a critic is familiar with, uh, familiar to you is familiar to everyone else. And also, and this is important, be careful about criticizing other scholars because they could be sitting in your audience. <laughs> <laughs> they will not appreciate you talking about their critical flaw and big, you know, if they're sitting there, uh -huh, question. <laughs> <laughs> and think about your audience. In every audience, we have some experts in your specific area, some experts in your general area, and some who know little or nothing. As a speaker, you need to reach all of these people. Give them all something that they can take home. So here's the format of a typical conference talk. We will begin with the non-technical, and we'll, become, we'll kind of go in and out like this. Each of our major topics, we will begin by introducing the problem very well. And then we come out to the application, problem application, and then the ending as well. So we try to give something for everybody. This is the depth of the, of the topic, and this is time that we are speaking. Now, you don't have to do exactly this. Sometimes we can begin general and end general. That's the more typical structure. But it's nice to come up in the middle somewhere, too, to connect again with those people who are sleeping. The key point with sleeping people is one guy who's sleeping will influence everybody. <laughs> it's like a disease. You know, it will just spread through your audience. That's why, as a speaker, you're always watching. Always watching for the sleepers. Because the sleeper could easily bring more with him. The hotel phenomenon. It will just spread through your audience. So don't try to say too much. Use handouts for extra material that you want to say. Have a timing device, especially when you are practicing your talk. Don't practice for the first time at the conference. You need to know how long each slide will take. You can put a little stopwatch. We use an egg timer in my class, and it goes ding, and then we know the time is up. I want students to be very familiar with what 12 minutes feels like, what three minute Q&A feels like. Otherwise, we'll just go to 20 minutes, and the chair will kick us out during our key point. We don't want that to happen, and if we practice 12 minutes, 12 minutes, we begin to have a feel, almost to the minute, when 12 minutes comes, and how long each slide will take. Now, I should also mention that we are responsible for ending on time. We cannot just go on and on into another guy's time. He came all the way across the world for his 12 minutes, and we just can't take his 12 minutes. That's not polite. Also, don't let other people take your 12 minutes. Oh. <laughs> I have interrupted 
speakers who are coming before my students before, because I see our time is going, I'll say, excuse me, sir, we need to speak. My student just so embarrassed. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want our time to be taken. It's very valuable that we be able to make our full contribution there, and we need to be conscious about our own time as well. Practice PowerPoint also has a timing function that you can use to see how long each slide will take you. And that if someone interrupts you and takes some of your time, don't think you can immediately go with your normal time and go into someone else's time. You should know in advance what slides you can skip. Because if you don't know that, what will happen? You'll come to the end and you'll skip your implications and results, which is the most important part of your... You'll spend a lot of time on, on, on uh, introduction and on method, which is not so critical. And you will ch cheat your implications and applications. So if you know you're running out of time, know which slides in the middle you can cut, which slides in the beginning you can cut. Don't cut the last ones. That's where your value is. Here's a short conference talk outline that I use in my class for preparing our conference talk. The first one is, uh, the first slide will say the author, the title, and the university on it. Then abstract will give the basic problem and answer. An outline will give the basic talk structure. Then motivation and problem statement, one to two slides. This is just like the academic paper. We begin our introduction in the same way, right? Why does anyone care about this problem? That's our motivation. And then, what problem will we answer? Our problem statement. Related work. Very brief. Notice, zero to one slides. Sometimes I see people have 20 slides of literature review. What does that leave for our own contribution? <laughs> it looks like our own contribution is very small compared to the literature that we are citing. Methods. One slide. You know, very quickly, well, it depends on the research, but usually we are here for the results and implications, which are four to six slides. We will present only the key results and implications, and we will not cover all the results. We will cover some specific results well. We want to be able to make sure that people go home with a clear understanding of our work. If they want to know all of our results, read my paper, right? It's sitting here. You can take it home. Summary, one slide. Future work, one slide. Why do I have a future work? Well, I hope very much that I can advertise to the next generation of scholar to continue and extend my research. If they extend my research, they have to cite my paper, which includes <laughs> increases my impact factor, right? <laughs> I'm trying very hard to interest scholars in continuing. <coughs> also, there could be someone who wants to write a paper with me together, co-author. Two of my students right now are writing papers with people they met at conferences. One from Syria, one from Jordan. The future work slide can help. It's like fishing. You're looking for someone interested in working with you on another paper in the future. Finally, backup slides. What are the backup slides? Well, my students are always afraid of Q&A. And if we have time today, I'm going to talk about Q&A. But if no one asks questions, what do we do? <coughs> Here we are at 12 minutes, we have to go to 15, and we say, any questions? 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 <laughs> please, please, don't kill me, don't kill me. And everyone's just there looking at you. It's a long time. And if the audience doesn't ask the questions, what will happen? The chair will ask the question. His question's always terrible. <laughs> always terrible. Because he doesn't really plan on asking a question, so he will think, ah, uh, and then he'll ask you something that is just horrible, just really, really bad. So, to be prepared for this, what you should do is have three extra slides with questions that you will probably get asked. Uh, that way, if they ask, you can go to that slide. But if no one asks, you can say, one question I frequently get is, Chuchink, ask yourself a question. <laughs> Answer it. No one still? Okay, not a question. <laughs> Do your own Q&A. Make sure the show continues. Don't just stay there and slowly die in front of them. And then after, summarize and, uh, and finish. Sometimes for Q&A, by the way, my students will have like a, a little arrangement. The first question is always the most difficult to get. After first one, second one's easy, but first one, there's always the pause, you know? It takes forever, questions. You're sitting there, waiting. 
I, another stu if students go together, the other student will sit in the audience and ask the first question. I have a question. Oh, yes, sir. What's your... We know what this question will be. <laughs> we arrange the first one. <laughs> After the first one, second one will come. I mean, this is a way that we can cheat a little bit here and make sure that the Q&A can start. Uh, after the after the presentation. If you're using quotes in your speech, here's how we do it in English. You will say, he said, quote, and we go like this, chink, chink. When we do this in English, we are not trying to be cute. <laughs> this means quotation marks, quotation marks, right? Quote, end quote. We will say those words. He said, quote, Da, 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 end quote. We make the little thing sign with the fingers again. Sometimes we only go like this. We don't say quote, end quote. We just say, he said, again, this means not my words. Someone else's words. Not picture time. Right? <laughs> uh, then, yeah, be careful criticizing other scholars. I talked about that. PowerPoint is useful compared to, uh, it saves time compared to writing on the power on the board. But sometimes students want to use all of the special features of PowerPoint, the little cute thing. But the problem is, PowerPoint is not actually your friend. And I want to make this an important point here. PowerPoint does not replace you as a speaker. And the more powerful you make PowerPoint, the weaker you become. Because you are competing with your PowerPoint for the attention of your audience. You are. So the stronger PowerPoint is, the more people will not look at you. And PowerPoint should not replace you. The speaker is the point. This is why if you watch that uh, movie, An Inconvenient Truth with Al Gore, I don't know if you saw that movie, he uses PowerPoint, but he uses a pointer like this, and every time he says something, he turns his PowerPoint off. Talks on, off. Wonderful. He knows this rule that PowerPoint is fighting him. He doesn't want people looking at the cute picture, he wants them looking at him as the speaker. And I think the reason why people make their PowerPoint so detailed and complicated is that they think that the goal, the goal of a speech is only to inform. They think they are only there to give the information. But that is not the goal of the speech. If our only goal in a presentation was to give information, we could save a lot of time today if I emailed you the PowerPoint and we didn't come here at all. That is not our only goal. We also need to make the information interesting. We are also selling the information. We are also applying it. We are creating a feeling. And when we make that link, we can move our audience with us, and they will remember much more. Information is not the only reason why we're there, which is why PowerPoint can't be too powerful. It can't. And you've seen this before, too. Speakers who turn on their PowerPoint, and when the PowerPoint turns on, everybody turns off, right? <laughs> You've seen it. You've seen it. I've, I've watched it myself in my other cla in my classes sometimes. I'll see a speaker turn on the PowerPoint, and the noise of the machine. And I look around the room, everyone. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just a physical response. I don't even think they know they're doing it. Just... <laughs> the eyelids half close, the body slouches preparing for the sleeping. <laughs> PowerPoint is dangerous. It's not always your friend. Just keep that in mind, especially at the conference. And also, about PowerPoint, prepare for computer problems. The more technical things you put in your PowerPoint, the more technical problems you may have. Video animation could kill everything. So let's avoid it. I always like to use the light background with the dark words because I never know the lighting of the conference, and this is the safest one. Light background with dark. Dark and light, if there's any light from outside or the sun is shining in, you can't see it. But if we keep light and dark, it's always the safest bet for the... Uh, but have a backup on your USB or your MP3 player of your slides or online that you can download if something happens. Another thing is sometimes conferences have no power. Computer dies completely. So we always print out a hard copy of our PowerPoint slides to carry with us. Because even though it's possible to give a speech with no PowerPoint, it's very difficult with no notes at all, right? So at least if we have our own PowerPoint, we can survive if we go to a conference. You can also use your handout if you have a handout. It's like to go through the handout with people if you don't have PowerPoint. Here are some other presentation problems that students sometimes have. 
What if someone asks a question about an issue you plan to discuss later? It ruins your flow, so just quickly answer the question and go back to your...